uh, target with the first quarter performance. Uh, where does this leave us? Let's ask uh, the experts. Pranjal Bhandari, the chief India economist at HSBC, has joined us in a bit. Indranil Sen Gupta of Bank of America Merrill Lynch will also be with us. Pranjal, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. How would you characterize, characterize this number? Was it uh, uh, weaker than you thought? And uh, does it mean that you will have to revise your year in figures as well? Well, it was a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, the GDP number per se was lower than we had expected, uh, you know, at 7%. Uh, we were expecting, you know, almost 8% growth. Uh, but the GVA number was higher than, you know, we had thought. Uh, it came in at 7.1% uh, and a full percentage point higher than uh, last quarter's reading. Uh, out of the two, uh, you know, while, you know, the global norm is to look at the GDP number, uh, here we would actually uh, prioritize the GVA number because because you know the way the GDP data is panning out recently, GVA is a cleaner read uh, of the underlying activity in the economy, uh, and and in GVA, you know we we we, we did see that one percentage point increase uh, in the reading. Now on the side, we also do uh, a lot of analysis using about 20 to 25 coincident indicators, you know other indicators of activity, and they too are suggesting uh, that there is some improvement. So for instance, uh, our indicators show that about 50 percent of GDP uh, are showing an increase, are showing an improvement, uh, and about 50% is not yet showing any improvement. We had done the same analysis a quarter ago, and we had found that only 40% was showing improvement, 60% was not. So over a quarter, even our indicators analysis suggests that there is some pickup in activity, which yesterday was also borne out uh, by the GVA data that we had seen. Uh, so, you know, activity is lifting, uh, but of course there is some confusion in the GVA GDP uh, distinction. So can you just throw some more light on that pickup in activity? I mean, was it within, uh, you know, industry, within, within services, uh, 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 private sector gaining? Any, any more color that you can throw on it? So our analysis shows that it's basically come from government. Now, uh, it's not very clear when you look at the headline, but if you really pass through the details, you'll see that government expenditure shows up in different parts of the GDP. So on the supply side, there was a big increase in construction growth. Uh, you know, construction growth almost grew 6.9%, and it's been very weak in the last couple of quarters. Now, a lot of the government capex increase that we've been seeing in the first quarter actually shows up in the construction sector. Then on the product side, we also saw public administration spend, which is generally, you know, the government spending on the social sector, education, health, that too saw some, you know, small increases. On the expenditure side, uh, there was a big increase in government consumption, which is, you know, largely the government's wage and salary bills and other current expenditure of the government. And there was also some lift in investments. Now, here again, we think that the small lift in investments was more driven by the government capex spend that we've seen in 1Q rather than, you know, private sector capex, which doesn't seem to be coming, uh, you know, in a hurry at, at, at this point of time. So, uh, so really, you know, the, the one common theme across yesterday today's data was, uh, was, was the involvement of government. Uh, which brings me to my second point, that yesterday we also got to know that uh, the government has actually already reached 70% of its fiscal deficit target in the first four months of the year. So this upfront spending by government might actually lose out steam uh, later on into the year. And, and, and that's when we'll need new and different drivers of, uh, dri drivers of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, you know, when we talk about different drivers of growth, oil plays a, plays a very important part. Okay, well, uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, Indranil Sengupta, uh, the chief economist uh, at Bank of America, Mel Lynch, has also joined us. Uh, good morning, Indranil. Uh, really, I uh, got uh, a slightly contrary reading. I thought public expenditure spent at 2.8% uh, over an already weak base of 2.7% looked low to me. Uh, but you buy uh, Pranjal's argument that probably government spending is to be read in the capex growth at 4.4%, uh, that actually government is pump priming? Okay, you know, I think that the best thing that we can do at this point is try to look at the old GDP series rather than get into all these details about the new GDP series. And what we find is that the old GDP series gives you a growth of around 5%. It's been pretty much that way for the last one, one and a half years. So I think the economy is, you know, if you, if you see the GDP numbers that we have been comfortable with, uh, the economy is growing at around 5%. So that's point one. 
point two coming to the capex i think we need to wait a bit more because right now you are comparing a period of full fledged government with a period of an interim budget mm. so naturally last year when you had uh, an interim you know a change election then you had an interim budget uh, the government kind of spent on you know the revenue part which it had to and it didn't really spend on on the capex side because so that's something that we need to see because you know at the end of the day uh, capex is actually down mm. uh, you know it's down from 30.4% to 29.8% so uh, so one needs to wait and watch what happens for the next 3 months when we get like to like data on you know two full fledged governments but can't you compare between this quarter and last quarter i mean uh, you know that's the comparison that tranjul was making that there's been some lift in investment due to government capex spend between last quarter and now see march quarter the government has traditionally clamped down on expenditure to meet fiscal deficit targets this has been the uh, uh, you know phenomena for the last 2 to 3 years so it's difficult to compare between june and march so i'd rather compare between you know two like quarters mm. so uh, even given the way things are going and as pranjal said mm. uh, if the government uh, is overshooting its budget target it will again have to go and clamp down next march okay uh, but indranil so can you quarters are somewhat special are you at, uh, able to corroborate or agree with what pranjal is saying in terms of things getting better quarter on quarter is that i mean either with the gdp data or through anecdotal evidence uh, are you able to even come to that conclusion yeah i think there's a very very slow recovery uh, i think you got to see the thing in a global context in the sense that you know here we are even in the old gdp series growing at 5% brazil and russia are degrowing mm. so i think this is the best that you can do mm. in the current global environment that we are in so you know the number is disappointing when you look at india's past growth profile or maybe when you look at expectations but when you see what's happening across ems in particular this is actually a very good number okay we also have the advantage of lower commodity prices and now a bit of transmission of rate cuts as well with hdfc bank announcing yesterday so will subsequent quarters therefore yes. look better after all private final consumption expenditure has grown by over 7% I think that you know consumption recovery is in the cards because number one you are seeing some lending rate cuts, number two the pay commission will kick in with at least 0.3 to 0.5 percent of GDP of you know stimulus uh, by, by April. Uh, number three households have saved about 0.4 percent of GDP because of lower oil prices, and that's hitting a critical mass. So at some stage you know they will start to spend. and number 4 at some stage maybe you know uh, the government will raise wheat prices uh before the uh, elections in up and punjab to implement the swaminathan formula that's up in the air but the other three factors are playing out so we think that you know you are actually looking at a consumption recovery in the next 6 months to 12 months okay but we haven't seen any recovery in consumption just yet so given that point pranjal uh, since the consumption has been very fragile and you know the investment revival has not been there so far um, is the case for monetary easing stronger uh, and do you expect that before the fed policy something could take place or do you think that the rbi governor will wait till the fed policy gets out of the way yeah so just quickly to uh, one thing before i uh, before i answer that uh, you know oil prices had actually increased in the second quarter in you know in the april to june quarter they had increased 16% quarter on quarter since then they have fallen pretty sharply uh, so the impact the beneficial impact of oil on consumption and perhaps more on corporate earnings will probably show up more uh, you know later in the in the year and and in some sense counteract the slowdown we'll see when the government stops spending uh, so you know that that's one thing on 
I mean, changing drivers of growth going forward. Now, in terms of uh, rate cuts, uh, well, uh, you know, recovery, as Zindanil was also saying, uh, you, you can see some glimpses of it here and there, but it's it's very faint at, at this point, and it's it's moving along quite slowly. And we do feel that uh, at least you know we'll see one uh, rate cut of about 25 bips, uh, you know, for the rest of this calendar year. Uh, we have it penciled in for September. I don't really see any case of it happening before sem September as of now. Uh, but you know, closer to 29 September, uh, we will see you know how the rupee is behaving, if, whether it's stable or not, and take a call if it's going to be exactly in September or will it be pushed uh, towards the December quarter. Okay, uh, we leave it at that. Thanks, guys, for uh, analyzing the growth picture for us and giving us the estimates of when the next rate cut will come in from the RBI. For